without further ado, with with Maynard, you you know our top topic this week is, is autonomy, um, and we're really fortunate to have Maynard Holiday, who's just probably a, a just an ideal person to hear from on the topic. Um, he's a uh, I say his little person has been a staunch supporter of, of, of our efforts here with Steve Blank and others build, helping us build this Hacking for Defense program over the years. Uh, you've all seen his bio, uh, you know, in his most recent government job, he was a senior technical advisor for you know, the Undersecretary of Defense for at the time was called Acquisition Technology and Logistics, uh, which was, you know, they ended up splitting that off, uh, you know, in this administration, but just a huge role and had huge impact. Uh, you know, of note, he was a senior government advisor for the Defense Science Board's 26th study on autonomy. Uh, and he helped Secretary Carter establish uh, Raj Shah's organization, the Defense Innovation Unit, amongst many other things. But as we know, this most important accomplishment, Maynard, is that he holds a master's degree from, uh, from Stanford in, in mechanical engineering, uh, and where he had an emphasis on robotics and international security. So, so just a perfect background to join us. And uh, Maynard, I really appreciate you making time for us. And uh, over to you. And the students have plenty of questions. And uh, so, so we look forward to hearing from you. Yeah, uh, good to be here, Joe. And uh... You, you promised that I could share my screen, so I'm going to do yeah, that. Yeah, and let me just make sure we made you the right host and all that, so. Okay. Okay. Um, let's see. Okay, you should be good now. Okay. I'm going to do that. Um, and then I'm going to do that. Uh, okay, so can everybody see that title? You made one request. Yeah, there you go. Thank, thanks so much. It's, that looks great. Just on uh, Yeah, yeah. Okay. Cool, cool. All right. So thanks for that intro, Joe. Um, good to be with you all. Um, let's, uh, let's dive in. Um, okay. How do I progress? Okay. As Joe said, um, I was, whoa. Uh, let's go back. Yeah, I was, I was appointed uh, by President Obama in 2014 as the Senior Tech Advisor to the Undersecretary of Defense for Acquisition. So as Joe said, that's two roles now. It's Acquisition and Sustainment and uh, R&E. Um, back uh, uh, actually for, for decades before that, it, it was one role and I served the, uh, the longest serving Undersecretary uh, Frank Kendall uh, in that role. Um, okay, let's see if that button works. Yes. All right, so uh, you know my background is uh, is varied. It's a it, it's a hybrid of defense and Silicon Valley, um, and so these are all stops in my career, um, in no particular order, and that's not all of them. <laughs> and so, um, and uh, I presently work for the the Rand Corporation now, um, helping head up their uh, technology horizon scanning up up here in the uh, San Francisco Bay Area. Okay, so uh, let's dive in uh, to the uh, 2016 uh, Defense Science Board Autonomy Study. And so the Science Board um, is a uh, external advisory board to the Defense Department. And uh, Steve Blank is a member of the Business Board. Um, as a, uh, um, a senior government official in, in ATNL, you know, Acquisition Technology and Logistics, I became one of the uh, government advisors to this study. So each summer, the undersecretary um, and the secretary of defense charged the, the science board with a, um, a really important um, summer study to inform policy. And so uh, this was the charge uh, in the summer of um, 2015 um, to, uh, to take on uh, autonomy. All right, so there's a lot of definitions of autonomy out there. Um, and what uh, the Defense Science Board settled on um, that was most germane to uh, defense applications was autonomy at rest and uh, autonomy in motion. Um, and so, uh, you know, that's depicted, you know, in these, uh, you know, kind of bubbles here where you have artificial intelligence overlapping with intelligent systems and, uh, and robotics and autonomy at rest is uh, um, cyber, you know, where you have to react at machine speed to uh, in incursions and uh, and cyber attacks. And then autonomy in motion is uh, is kinetic, uh, 
where you have to deal with, um, uh, you know, incoming, um, you know, missiles and, uh, and other, you know, kinetic uh, effects that you have to deal with in the physical world. And so our, our different definitions of, uh, of those three elements uh, are as follows, um, you know, AI, and, uh, you know, theory and development of, of systems that are able to perform, you know, normally, you know, tasks that normally require human intelligence and that's visual perception and speech recognition, decision making, you know, robotics is the, you know, kinetic element here, um, you know, delivers flexibility by incorporating sensors and actuators. And then intelligent systems, you know, span uh, both the time at rest and, uh, and the kinetic form. Um, the key harder. All right, so why does DOD need autonomy? So this is a, a, a con ops of uh, uh, a, a, a battle space, uh, you know, that you can, uh, you know, those operators out there and, and, and other people in the defense domain can imagine. You know, you can think of, of this as the Taiwan Straits. You can think of this as, uh, you know, near the Korean Peninsula, um, where you have, uh, uh, you know, the joint force here, um, you know, carrier battle group. Um, uh, you know, you see AWACS, you know, aircraft depicted there. You know, you have satellite comms and, and you see, you know, to the right here, uh, you know, aggressor forces on the right um, that present dynamic threats, um, and how you can address these with autonomy is you can increase the speed and accuracy of, of your decisions, and uh, and I'm sure your your classes uh, you know discuss the the OODA loop, um, and so the what you want to, you want to get inside your adversary's uh, OODA loop to uh, um, have, uh, you know, effect and, and have advantage. Um, and so, uh, you know, you're both working in a uh, autonomy at rest um, domain, as well as a, an autonomy, um, uh, you know, in, uh, in, in motion domain. And, and so autonomy is going to be able to enable new tactics um, and uh, both, you know, in the physical and, and, and cyber domains. So you can see again, uh, you know, in the, the orange uh, bubbles there, you, you know, what your adversary could be throwing at you, you know, cyber threats, you know, dynamic threats, uh, you know, denied GPS and comms, you know, that we already see, you know, in the battle space today. Okay, so autonomy delivers operational value across a uh, diverse ar array of DOD missions. And so what this um, picture uh, depicts is uh, what the um, uh, kind of domain uh, or, you know, operator action is, is required. And you have, you know, on the left, low, um, you know, so you don't need autonomy when, you know, required decision speed is, is low. But as, you know, the decision speed required to respond goes up, the value of autonomy goes up. And then in the, in the right column there, you see examples of where uh, autonomy provides value. So, uh, and so some of these, you know, are, are very obvious and um, are, um, being used, uh, you know, autonomy is, is being used today. So, you know, an obvious example, obviously, as I said earlier, cyber operations, where you have to react at machine speed. Um, uh, the second row there, heterogeneity, heterogeneity and volume of data, uh, when you have, uh, you know, imagery intelligence data analysis. So we're, we're overwhelmed by, uh, you know, imagery uh, from, you know, NGO, NRO, and, and, and all the satellite constellations, um, you know, in, in orbit, giving us, uh, um, you know, battle space information. Um, 
obviously, you know, complexity of action as, as that uh, complexity goes up, you want to be able to, uh, uh, you know, make decisions, uh, you know, more quickly. So you have an air operations center. Um, and, and that's an interesting case study uh, that uh, you, you may have uh, talked about in the, in the class or is coming up um, that uh, some staff at, at DIU uh, uh, under Raj uh, dealt with. Um, danger of mission, you know, in, in contested operations and, you know, CBRN attack cleanup, you know, chemical, biological, radiological, nuclear attack cleanup. Um, and, and so these were the, you know, kind of the, the missions that uh, our uh, combatant commanders uh, gave to the, the science board to, uh, um, to assess how it could, uh, you know, in, improve operations. So again, so, some more advantages. So you want to get inside the adversary's decision cycle. You want to extend your attack surface um, so you're more survivable. Um, again, you might have talked about offset strategies in the class. Um, uh, you know, second offset was around uh, um, guided mun munitions. Um, autonomy gives you raid breaking capability. Um, you want to create new mass. Um, so disaggregating complex systems to deliver combined effects. Um, and so this, uh, you know, was born out of, you know, what we saw our, our near peer adversaries doing uh, to hold our uh, high value assets at, uh, at risk, you know, like carrier groups and um, another, you know, like the F-35. So, uh, you know, that exchange ratio um, became unfavorable um, when, you know, you have low cost systems um, being able to put, you know, multi-billion dollar, you know, uh, aircraft carriers and, and other um, surface asset sets at risk. So you want to be able to disaggregate those. Um, you want to uh, be able to leverage dispersal and, and sanctuaries um, with, uh, you know, high numbers of uh, autonomous systems and be able to react at speed. Um, and you want to be able to develop new forms of distributed maneuver, uh, combining both kinetic and uh, electronic um, aspects. So our approach, you know, back in 2015, and you know, it says 2016 because that's when the study was published. But uh, we we started this in 2015. So we we surveyed the uh, global technology industrial base that included, you know, top tech firms uh, out here in the valley. Uh, the top DOD laboratories, as well as, you know, leading university research groups um, to assess, you know, both the near and long-term capabilities that the de department uh, should be investing in. So I led that part of the study, you know, so because I came from here, um, I led the team back out here to, uh, to survey, uh, you know, who was doing what, uh, where. Um, all right, so this is a bit of an, an eye chart, but this is uh, a, uh, from Bloomberg Beta and uh, a, uh, a really talented young woman named Siobhan Zillis, who, who actually uh, works for Elon Musk now. Um, but I, I, I would point you to, um, and so this is about a four or five year old chart. So this, uh, um, I don't know if she's updated it or Bloomberg Beta has updated it, but what I'd like to point out is, uh, you know, if you look in the middle of the page in the in the blue uh, rectangle, um, you'll see ground navigation and aerial, um, and uh, and so you know that landscape has changed. Uh, so um, uh, Amazon, excuse me, Amazon has acquired Zooks. Um, Google is now you know, their autonomous play is, is Waymo. Um, and uh, Mobileye has been acquired by Intel. Um, and then uh, moving over to the aerial box, uh, uh, you know, DIU just uh, uh, did some great work establishing a US um, vetted 
and um, uh, uh, you know source uh, uh, UAV or uh, uh, you know small UAV um, uh, market uh, for government to uh, acquire um, trusted um, UAV platforms because DJ, DJI as you know shown there is you know kind of the world leader but is is from china and so you have um uh you know obvious uh you know proliferation um you know concerns uh there so uh, so anyway that market has changed you know uh, uh changed and and skydio is is now a, a trusted um vendor for the u.s government um and so anyway so this is you know machine intelligence 3.0 like i said this is three or four years old um this uh you know has has, has changed uh markedly s since then but these are the kind of the, the verticals within machine intelligence um that i would uh you know point you to okay so scenarios that we studied um uh the covert deployment of networks of smart mines and unmanned order underwater vehicles um to blockade and deny the sea surface um and be able to differentiate between uh you know friend and foe um autonomous systems to control rapid fire exchange of cyber weapons so this is you know kind of the uh autonomy at rest piece and uh was uh um uh you know exemplified by the you know the darpa you know cyber grand challenge where uh you know a, a team from uh cmu was able to uh identify a uh an attack and and patch, um, you know the uh, attacks uh, surface in real time, um, it, you know very successfully, and you know the CMU team you know formed a company behind this, and is uh, you know doing great work uh, you know for our IC community and and other DoD customers. Um, so continuing on, autonomous swarms. Um, and so again, those of you in the community know, uh, you know, about this, that last quote at the bottom, you know, quantity has a quality all its own. Um, so, uh, you know, large numbers of small autonomous systems, you know, both, uh, you know, ground-based or, or air-based, uh, you know, that could covertly enter and persist in a denied area to collect information or disrupt enemy operations, you know, in a, in a sleeper presence on call. Um, offensive UAV swarms, large numbers of uh, low-cost autonomous unmanned aircraft uh, capable of adaptively jamming and disrupting uh, precision navigation and timing capabilities. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, we made these recommendations and some of them were operationalized and invested in immediately. And, you know, I would call your attention to the DARPA offset program. Um, run by Tim Chung. So that's the offensive uh, enabled swarm, swarm and offensive swarm enabled tactics is the is what offset stand stands for. So he's a he's a prof out of the um, um, Naval Postgraduate School and holds the record for holding, uh, you know, uh, 100 v 100 swarm games. Um, and, you know, he took his uh, expertise to DARPA to, to run a swarm swarm challenge. So uh, anyway, so these things are happening, you know, right right now, you know, within the, um, the research ecosystem. And then autonomy at rest, you know, autonomous high performance computing. Um, and I, I described, you know, earlier that, you know, DARPA invested in the DARPA Cyber Grand Challenge um, to um, seed, you know, funding of systems being able to search big data for indicators of uh, WMD proliferation um, and to do it smartly and to decide what databases to search to provide early warning and, and enable action. And so the recommendation highlights uh, um, modernized software acquisition practices. Uh, and so, you know, Eric Schmidt's uh, Defense Innovation Board tackled this and uh, um, you know, brought modern Silicon Valley uh, DevOps uh, 
software development practices to the the DoD, and um, and so you know you see that in the in the form of you know Kessel Run um, and and other uh, um, innovation organizations throughout the DoD. Um, you know we recommended creating new test evaluation and modeling uh, simulation par paradigms. Um, and then importantly, and uh, you know, Raj could speak to this, uh, you know, developing an, an autonomy literate workforce. And so when they, uh, when DIU tackled that air operations center uh, problem, uh, uh, Colonel uh, OT, uh, you know, had to go out to the Air Force and, and look for, uh, um, it, you know, airmen, you know, who had software backgrounds, but you know, there is no, at least back then, there was no software uh, you know, category, you know, within the Air Force. So he had to get guys who, you know, were doing this as a hobby to, to come, you know, under the tent to, uh, um, you know, to help him, uh, you know, rewrite this code, uh, you know, for air operations. Uh, counter adversary autonomy, um, you know, again, being able to, um, on the offensive side, um, deal with, uh, you know, potential uh, uh, incursions by, uh, you know, our, our near peer adversaries, you know, who are looking to, um, uh, you know, disrupt our, uh, our high value um, assets. And then, you know, establish an annual swarm games, um, which was a, you know, an idea that, uh, that I promoted. Uh, um, and so that's similar to, you know, the, the DARPA challenges that you see that have advanced, you know, technology over the years, um, you know, where you've seen advances in, uh, you know, autonomous vehicles and, um, you know, cyber and, and others, you know, so when you, when you concede, um, uh, you know, competitions, you can, uh, you know, leapfrog um, and, and advance in a, you know, almost in a step type function uh, capabilities. And so, uh, I'll just say lastly, you know, after we published this report, we, we briefed it to the combatant commanders in the building. And, uh, you know, they all said, uh, you know, this is great. Um, but, uh, you know, if we can't trust these systems, we will not, uh, you know, deploy them. And so a, a big effort, you know, undergoing, you know, right now is how do you build trust in into uh, uh, autonomy so that's still a, an open question um that uh you know you and uh your, your colleagues you know and fellow students um you know can be thinking about and and addressing and uh i put the link to the uh this defense science board uh report at the bottom of this slide so i will stop there and uh open it up for questions. Thanks very much, Mayor. That was fantastic. We're, uh, as we discussed earlier, we're, we're, we're really going to keep these slides as a great resource for, for us and for the class and beyond. Um, so, uh, Mayor Ray, I'll start. I, I, I'm not, uh, I hate to avoid, I like to avoid anything political or partisan, but, but I would be curious, given you spent so much time in the previous administration, um, you know, what are your thoughts of, uh, you know, if, if there's a change here this time, Challenge and opportunities you see, but what, what may or may not be different in, in you know, your old uh, uh, <laughs> role, so to speak, or? In my old haunts. Um, so, you know, full disclosure, you know, I'm working for the other guy right now uh, <laughs> on his, uh, his campaign. Um, and so, uh, you know, one of the things that we're, uh, you know, looking at is uh, how to, you know, continue. And, and I have to say, um, you know, we were fortunate on the defense side that, uh, you know, we, you know, at least on the innovation front, um, survived, you know, contact with the, the new administration who, who didn't just simply um, throw out, you know, what we had, uh, had put in place. And, and so, so I think there, you know, there's going to be some continuity. I just think there's going to be some uh, you know, change of, change of faces, you know, maybe not, uh, you know, 
change of uh, priorities because you know we are we certainly are in a, in a great power competition, and uh, you know we have uh, and we recognize it in the old administration that uh, you know that technological superiority that we enjoyed um, you know was on the order of a decade or more, and and that's not the case anymore because of you know as Ash Carter said in uh, in your you know your first um, uh, you know class. You know, we're, we're trading with China, you know, we just, uh, um, you know, cordon off Russia. So I think things um, will con continue on and, and uh, uh, you know, maybe there'll be a, uh, a, a more inclusive, um, I would say, defense posture with our allies, um, because we saw that at the end of the last administration where our, our allies were interested in, um, doing some of the same things around innovation. So that's what I see on the horizon. Well, thanks, thanks, Salt Leader. Leader, could I ask you maybe to uh, stop sharing so we could see more of you and less? less oh, 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 just, oh, okay, my bad. No, it's great. We're just, we were recording this. So we just want to get a, <laughs> make right. it a little more personal. Thank, yep. thank you. Those are wonderful. Yeah. And I'll just refer to Raj and Steve for the next, next couple of questions, then open it up. I'll let Raj take the first one. Sure. Um, so, so many of you've seen, um, you know, you've worked uh, uh, in a couple of different administrations. You helped spearhead this autonomy report. Um, you know, we, we just see the importance of autonomous systems continue to grow militarily commercial. Um, for, you know, the, the, the next administration, be it this one gets reelected or a, a new administration comes in, what are the top priorities you would give them from an autonomy standpoint to make sure? Yeah. Um, so, sure. so good question, Raj. So, you know, at Rand, uh, you know, I, as I said, I'm doing, you know, horizon scanning for, you know, the uh, FFRDCs that Rand um, has. So that's the Air Force, the Army, Office of Secretary of Defense and Homeland Security. And so what we are um, advising and, you know, me particularly is that the, uh, the government be a fast follower to the commercial sector, because um, you know, as you know, uh, you know, the government was, you know, customer number one post World War II. Fast forward to, you know, the 21st century, we are, or the government is a niche player now, and so they need to invest in. Um, uh, so I'll speak to autonomy, which is you know my my sweet spot you know, or, or autonomous vehicles, I should say. Um, so the government doesn't need to invest in uh, what's already a solved problem, which is uh, navigation on uh, on marked uh, roadways. Um, so that's a, you know, well-characterized solved problem by Tesla, Waymo, and, and others. Um, where investment needs to be made is in those uh, unique government use cases that are, for example, off-road, uh, you know, in uh, uh, places like Iraq, Afghanistan, and and other um, other places where you, you need to do uh, navigation in unstructured in, in environments, and so so investing in in military specific um, use cases is is where um, there should be a focus, um, and so that's. Uh, that's what we're advising now, and and you can you know say the same thing around uh, and around drones, you know so so drones are very good right now, or you know they, they can do some object tracking and, and recognition for, uh, you know I remember when Skydio first came out, you know like tracking guys on mountain bikes and skiing down hills, you know what's the military analog um, that you need to problem solve to to get the drone to perform, um, you know those uh, types of, uh, those types of missions. So, uh, uh welcome. Yeah. <laughs> good to hear you, Steve. Good to see you too. And, uh, and I almost didn't recognize you. Usually when guys retire, that's when they grow the beard and mustache. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, so well, look, I have a very funny question and you could pass on this one. Okay. You know, it, it's, it's usually, um, after guys left, the new guys come in and, and do all this hindsight and they should have, they would have, et cetera. But seriously, now that you're out looking in, 
Mm -hmm. Are there things you wish that the department had figured out or your group had figured out earlier, not because we were dumb, but just we didn't see it and we didn't see it coming? Or, I mean, what's your hindsight view of, of your tenure, not other, other people? Yeah, before. sure. Um, well, uh, uh, yeah, so. Uh, and since, you can pass. <laughs> no, no, I'm not going to pass. So since I'm out, uh, I can uh, be a little more candid. You, you know, so when, you know, we were standing up DIU, uh, you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, and I lost this uh, 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 argument was uh, that, uh, you know, we, we needed um, to have some street cred in, in the valley and, uh, you know, have, uh, uh, you know, people familiar with the, you know, the Valley ethos. Um, uh, and, uh, you know, and, and Carter, you know, course corrected. Um, uh, and, uh, and so, so that was one thing, you know, the second uh, thing that comes to mind is uh, uh, the, the fact that, you uh, um, you know the success me metrics um, in in the building are uh, you know everybody's afraid of failure, and you yeah. know and, and and Steve you know this um, and and so there was this uh, um, uh, you know we can't fail or you know we're going to lose uh, you know funding for next year or you know be be moved out of our positions and so you know, that, that fail fast and, and, uh, and break things, you know, ethos was, uh, w was missing. Um, and, you know, I think, you know, the proliferation of all of these, um, uh, you know, I, I call, you know, the innovation ecosystem, you know, AFWorks, Kessel Run, um, you know, and others, you know, the Navy, Naval X, I think now, um, you know, has, uh, you know, kind of blunted that, um, and you know, people are, are are more you know they're less risk averse now. Yeah. And and, uh, and so I think you know that's that's all good, and um, and and I think um, yeah, just the you know the fact that these you know these innovation centers you know are are still surviving, um, and and one of the things you know we didn't get, um, and uh, and DIU still needs to, well I don't know if it's DIU but it's um, you know, the, the building needs to react to, you know, these companies need to be able to get facility clearances um, so that they can work on the hardest problems. You know, the hardest problems, as you know, are um, uh, a lot of times classified. And so, you know, when you're not able to deal with, you know, those data sets or, you know, whatever um, they need to um, do to, to solve a, you know, show, you know, performance around a problem, yeah, you know, that's a that's a lost opportunity. Great. Well, thank you. Uh, a great answer for a tough question. So, Raj or Joe, you want to uh, take oh, so questions from the students? Janani's got a good one, and she's her first hand up. Janani, are you still up for 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 yours? Yeah, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with us and I really enjoyed your slides. So thank you for those. My question had to do with what do you think is the ideal balance between autonomous systems and human decision making and tasks that are currently operated by humans? And how can the government ensure that it maintains a good balance between the two? Yeah, so, um, so great question. You know, we had to deal with uh, the, the campaign to stop killer robots um, and had to address those, uh, those concerns. And there, you know, so there's DOD order, I think it's 3009 that uh, says, look, um, and, you know, I think it's still in place that, you know, the human has to be at the end of the kill chain. Uh, so, you know, there's no, you know, you may see in movies, you know, drones doing things or, you know, the Black Mirror episode with the, you know, flies or, you know, the drones going after people based on facial recognition. So, uh, so that's not happening, you know, so there is no drone out there taking shots, uh, you know, based on uh, 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 autonomy. So, um, uh, so that's still, you know, the practice. Um, and so the balance is, um, and, and, and we pointed this out in our um, autonomy report, that, you know, the US doesn't, you know, ever want to be in a fair fight, right? You know, we don't want to put our, our, you know, airmen, sailors, uh, you know, Marines in a, uh, you know, harm's way. And so we want to be able to react at, at the very least defensively at machine speed. 
And, and so, um, you know, if somebody's firing at us, um, uh, you know, we want to be able to, to react and, and not have to, you know, go to a human operator um, to, uh, to recognize and get, you know, clearance. You know, you want to be able to react um, and, uh, and, and protect yourself. And so, you know, at the very least, you know, defensively, we want to be able to react, uh, you know, at, at machine speed. So we want to employ autonomy there. Um, and so, uh, yeah, and so the, the balance is still maintained that, uh, you know, there's a human at the, the end of the, the kill chain um, for, for any, um, you know, autonomous system now. Great. Uh, well, our Hacking for Defense veteran and military veteran Holden uh, has a question. Over to you, Holden. Hey, hey sir. Thanks for being here. Uh, as you may recall, you were very helpful for, for the, our team for Hacking for Defense. So uh, okay. th thank you for that help and thank you for being here. So, uh, yeah, my, my question revolves around you talked about how you were told that those the systems, the autonomous systems would not be deployed before they're trusted. And obviously, you know, trust can be defined various ways, but I'm curious as to how you guys uh, set about trying to quantify and measure trustworthiness such that you would know if it, if it passed the test. Yeah, so great question. Um, and so the feedback we got from commanders and, and you know, people, uh, you, you know, out in the, in the battle space was we wanted to, they wanted to be able to, um, to say that, you know, commander's intent was uh, carried out. And so what we had to draw out from them was, well, what would it take for you to uh, say that the commander's intent was, uh, um, you know, carried out? And so um, there, and so we talked about auditable um, systems so that, you know, once a, uh, a command was given, um, you would be able to retroactively um, look, you know, through the, um, you know, the algorithm or, you know, some way to, and, and, you know, have the commander or, you know, the people who architect the system say that, all right, you know, I, I checked this box, you know, and, and this is just a, you know, a, for example, you know, about, uh, you know, civilian, uh, you know, casualties, um, you know, there's a, um, you know, some, uh, some formula uh, uh, or not, you know, procedure around which, you know, that's assessed. And, and so you want to make sure your, you know, your autonomous algorithm is, is checking that and uh, to the satisfaction of the, of the commander. And, and so, you know, as we speak now, there's uh, systems being, you know, developed that have those, um, uh, you know, kind of check points, um, you know, that will give, uh, you know, a commander and, and then an operator a, uh, um, a log of, uh, you know, the decision tree it went through to, uh, you know, employ, um, you know, kinetic effects. Um, but again, at the at the end of those kinetic effects, if they're lethal, you know the the human has to, you know, ultimately pull that trigger. Oh, thank you. I really appreciate that answer, sir. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Maynard. Uh, John, Warren, I got you up next. Thank you. Thank you very much for being here. Um, my question follows Holden's pretty closely. Um, so I actually work on autonomous systems, and a big part of what we do is autonomous uh, safety validation. Um, mm. And the current state of the art is, you know. For state-of-the-art systems, especially with computer vision, highly parameterized inputs, uh, there is no provable space. You can't prove things like the way you could with you know, the autonomous systems of the past that are expert designed. Um, but every time I hear things uh, you know, discussing kind of autonomy and validation in the DOD, it does kind of revert back to this kind of interrogatable model. Um, my question is, is what, what happens when there's a tension between enabling something with an expect uh, to perform at the state of the art, you know, with one of these highly parameterized neural network data driven models versus requiring that um, kind of interrogatable decision tree type of behavior. Is that tension present today and how is it resolved and how is that kind of thought process evolving? Is my yeah. You know, I'm, I'm not in the, uh, in the know anymore. 
um, you know, it may be, you know, in the, in the near future, but um, I, you know, I think that's a great question. Uh, and, and I don't know, you know, if, you know, it, it's been satisfactorily, uh, you know, re resolved, but I, I think, you know, the work, you know, you're doing to, uh, um, you know, essentially highlight, you know, what those, those issues are is, is important. Um, and, uh, you know, you, you will certainly be asked those questions uh, if, uh, you, you know, these, these systems, uh, you know, get to be, uh, you know, employed, um, you know, in, in any kind of, you know, demo. Gotcha. Thank you. All right. Um, let's see, Myrna, have you, have you teed up? Sure. Thank you for being here. Uh, my question um, revolves around acting at machine speed and making decisions in those kind of high speed scenarios that you sketched out. Uh, a lot of that, take missile defense, for instance, kind of mm -hmm. depends on everything talking to each other from right. the radar picking up an incoming missile to whatever you use to shoot it down. Right. right now, we have a lot of things that are not talking to each other and a lot of things that are going to be built in the next 10 to 15 years that are also stovepipe. So I'm just wondering how that discussion is unfolding in parallel with things like autonomy and AI. Yeah, so uh, another good question. So, uh, you know, since, uh, you know, my time in the building, you know, they've stood up the, uh, the Jake, right, the Joint Artificial Intelligence Center, um, which is to provide cross cutting um, capability, you know, to all the services. And so they are, you know, actively, you know, talking about and uh, uh, um, looking at a, you know, common, you know, data, you know, platform and, you know, in encrypted communication so that uh, uh, systems, you know, can talk with one another as they, uh, um, as they're in the, you know, in the battle space. So, so they, they have taken some proactive steps with the Jake, um, you know, their mission is to provide AI kind of a la carte. Um, so, uh, you know, I talked about the DARPA offset program. So that's one of the things that uh, that program is doing. You know, so if you're a, a, you know, a brigade commander, you know, in an urban environment, you'll be able to, you know, the hope is uh, take a, uh, um, you know, high level command saying, you know, search this building, you know, with the swarm and, uh, you know, use, you know, this already vetted and, um, you know, debugged, um, uh, algorithm and, and systems to, to go do that mission. Um, and, you know, if you're, you know, SOCOM and, and you need to, you know, surveil a, um, you know, location, you, you know, you can take, you know, some adjustment, you know, that, uh, that set of, uh, uh, you know, capability and employ it, you know, and with your drones. So that's the, that's the idea uh, around it. So, so the Jake is actively working the problem. Great. Uh, Lee, Lee, I have you next. Hi, thank you so much for speaking with us. Um, I'm wondering, thinking of this from a global perspective, if you had any opinions on how to monitor autonomous weapons globally, how much of this IP we should keep to ourselves versus share with our allies, or perhaps if there's any country that's really excelling in this area that we can aim to emulate? Yeah, so uh, a, a good question. Um, you know, we just finished a, a, you know, a study at RAND on, uh, you know, the, the Chinese um, investment in AI and, and where we are at relative, relative to them. And so the conclusion we, we came to is that the, the U.S. Uh, DOD needs to own the final, you know, kind of implementation of the capability for, uh, you know, military missions. So we can't cede that to um, the commercial marketplace. And so we're, you know, we're in this global competition now where China has access to the same capabilities um, that, that we have because you know, AI is, is, is global now. And so uh, we're not gonna be able to, um, uh, you know, keep our arms around it and, and say, you, you know, you're never gonna get a, uh, you know, an uh, autonomous uh, system that can face track or anything like that. 
but what we can do is is uh, you know put behind you know the DoD firewall um, the um, the unique application for you know that military mission. And so an example of that is uh, is what's happening in in robotics with Ross. Um, and so if you saw on my uh, my second slide. Uh, you know, I used to work for Will Willow Garage, which, uh, you know, was uh, kind of the Google of robotics. And, you know, the output of Willow, you know, was, you know, the robot operating system, which is a, you know, common uh, operating system now used worldwide. And what DOD has done has taken ROS and, uh, you know, there's now a, a military ROS that's available only to um, uh, DOD contractors that has, you know, calls, you know, for, you know, kind of military systems. Um, and so, uh, uh, yeah, so, you know, we can't put the genie back in the bottle. Um, so we're going to, you know, be competing with China, you know, and, and others uh, for global, uh, um, you know, AI, you know, talent and, and, and capability. But when it comes to, you know, the end game of employing it, for military purposes, uh, we have to to own, you know, that uh, those last steps. All right, thanks. Okay, I think we've got um, just missed it. Um, um, I think you messaged yeah. me privately that I'm next. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, um, I did. Lewis, there... you are. I did. Okay, I was looking for you. I, I lowered your hand. Go ahead, Lewis. No way. Thank you. Uh, also, thank you for spending time with us. Uh, I appreciate the time. So my question has to do uh, a little bit with regulation and spe specifically international regulation. So it, some of the preparation that was assigned for uh, today's class uh, talked about how the United States is currently not developing laws or uh, lethal autonomous weapon systems. However, that kind of immediately sparked up the idea of how do we guarantee that our adversaries, specifically China and Russia, are not also develop, you know, are not also developing uh, laws. And how do we put regulation in place to know that we have like a um, that we know how to proceed with assistance, especially with such such a big discussion around ethics and how we how we develop these and how this could lead to uh, really big international problems. Uh, so with the big reputation of of uh, sometimes not following regulation, how do we guarantee that our adversaries, especially China and Russia, are also not developing laws and how do we proceed? Well, well so, the, you know, the short answer is we don't, <laughs> you know, <laughs> prohibit them from, uh, you know, because there's all kinds of examples of them, uh, you know, breaking uh, treaties in the, you know, chemical and biological realm, uh, you know, uh, last uh, century. Um, and so, you know, I don't think, you know, the U.S. is, uh, at least, you know, when I was in the administration thinking about, uh, you know, unilaterally essentially tying one hand behind her back and saying, all right, we're not going to develop laws, but, you know, you guys go ahead and, because, you know, they're really, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a mission impossible to, uh, to, to try to enforce. Um, and so, as I said earlier, um, you know, at the very least, you know, we want to be able to, to react to, you know, our, our near peer adversaries, uh, law systems. And, you know, it's to be determined, uh, you know, the path that, uh, you know, the US will go down with respect to um, developing it, 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 its own systems. Thank you. Thanks, Peter. Kyle, up next. Yeah, thank you. <clears throat> I'm curious if you could speak to any ramifications you found with the DSB study um, with regards to the impact of, of autonomous systems on the number of, of uniformed and civilian personnel that, that DOD employs now and, and how that may or may not change in the future. Yeah, so uh, again, we were driven by, uh, you know, how, uh, and we had these discussions in the building, you know, in, in, in Kendall's office around, um, and, uh, you know, those of you who are serving and who, ha who have served, um, you know, each service, uh, you know, is, 
you know, either like the Air Force is pilot centric, you know, the Army is soldier centric, uh, and the, you know, the Navy is sailor centric. And, and, you know, my, my, my boss, uh, you know, West Point grad, um, and, you know, would ask the Army every time, well, not every time they came in, but a lot of times, like, why are we still um, putting troops in, uh, uh, you know, having soldiers uh, do first contact, you know, in a, in a battle space to draw fire so you can um, uncover enemy positions? You know, why, you know, haven't we thought outside the box and, you know, used autonomy um, or, you know, think about using autonomy? And, and so, you know, in our uh, report, you know, we, we go into some detail around how you can, um, you know, employ, you know, these capabilities um, to, uh, you know, keep, you know, soldiers, you know, out of harm's way, uh, you know, in these, you know, kinetic uh, uh, environments, you know, where, you know, you're, you're facing maybe an unseen enemy. Um, and so, you know, we didn't do a, you know, a look at, uh, you know, man, you know, manpower effects. Uh, but, you know, you can imagine, um, you know, Sarand has done some studies around autonomous trucks for, and, and, and those who have, have served in, you know, Iraq and Afghanistan with the IED issue. Um, you know, that was a, a, a big issue, you know, during my time in the building uh, around getting um, drivers, you know, because, that was, you know, the main, you know, casualty um, uh, cause was, you know, these IEDs of convoys servicing forward operating bases, you know, and, you know, just taking, uh, you know, routine, you know, water and fuel and, uh, and getting hit by IEDs. And so, you know, we looked at, um, you know, what it would, you know, how that would affect the job categories in the Army if we made those trucks uh, uh, autonomous and so i would i would refer you to some some ram reports around around that but uh um you know as in the commercial truck you know and that's another conversation around the displacement of commercial truck drivers as autonomy begins to encroach on you know long-haul trucking but you know i'll stop there thanks man man up, up next um, hi, thank you so much for joining. Um, I wanted to kind of, I guess, touch on again when you were talking about um, basically a lack of trust being part of the reason that the systems aren't being deployed. And another one of the recommendations you mentioned was to create new tests, evaluation, and modeling. And yep. I think that parallels something that we've talked in the class about in the class in terms of just having a general aversion to failure and like not wanting to spend money on those. So I, I was wondering, like, I guess it's kind of two parts. Like, how do you see um, kind of decreasing barriers to those, like trying to test and experiment at something that's really necessary in order to get a feel for these technologies. And then also like what happens with these recommendations? So you all have drafted this report and it sounds like um, you were met with, we're not gonna deploy it if we don't trust it, but <laughs> is there anything um, that will come up? In, in the yeah, future? yeah, so let me answer that for that last question first. And so, yeah, things did come of it. Um, so they did invest in, in, in programs to, uh, you know, pilot, Capabilities, so you know they stood up that DARPA program I told you about offset, and um, uh, you know there was a, a program called Explainable AI XAI. That was another one uh, that uh, you know they invested in, um, and, and then uh, uh, around um, the uh, uh, you know remind me of the first part of your question. I, I... Um, just about decreasing barriers to. Oh yes, 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 yeah. So. Um, having high fidelity simulation environments um, is uh, really important in building trust. And, and so, you know, with the, uh, you know, decreasing cost of compute and increasing, um, uh, you know, capability in, um, you know, simulation, uh, you know, your confidence in being able to to simulate, uh, um, you know, kinetic effects, you know, goes up. Um, and, uh, and so, you know, there's, there's going to be a, you know, a, a point when, you know, simulation is going to be able to give you, um, 
you know, much higher and higher confidence levels. And so that's, you know, what you'll see, um, you know, happen uh, uh, as a stepping stone to um, higher confidence in deployment of, of systems as, you know, the fidelity in, in, in simulation uh, increases. Okay, and uh, Maddie, we're getting towards the end of our time, but we're gonna work you in for sure. There. Um, thank you again for speaking with us. It's been a pleasure hearing about your experience. Um, so I was specifically kind of going back to those recommendations that you posed at the end of the slides. Um, you talked about creating um, autonomy literate workforce. Yes. So I was wondering if that you if you think the general culture in the OD has kind of acknowledged the importance of autonomous systems, and if so, like like why is there this gap? Like is it because of resources, leadership, willingness, like? Because, um, like, I guess, like, more generally, like, a lot of the speakers that we've heard so far are echoing, like, the same sentiments that, like, we need change, like, we need to understand these disruptive technologies. So I'm not sure if, like, the speaker sentiments are, like, a minority in the DOD or, like, I'm just, I'm just, like, frustrated because I don't know why things aren't happening. So, <laughs> yeah, so, uh, good question. And, and so it, it, uh, it, there's a lot of dimensions to this. Um, and, uh, you know, Secretary Ash Carter, you know, tried to address some of this with the uh, Defense Digital Service um, that, uh, you know, he preached uh, and, and I think all could agree that you, you need to make the barriers between private sector and, uh, and government service, you know, more uh, permeable so that people can go back and forth and, uh, and not uh, feel that they're, you know, losing, um, you know, both knowledge because, uh, you know, the government is, is behind and, and the government is, is behind for, for a lot of good reasons, um, you know, with respect to, uh, you know, secure, you know, cybersecurity and, and other things. Um, and so, you know, when you, you know, our, our systems fail, they're not what we call high stakes, uh, but, you know, in a, uh, in a defense setting, you know, the economy is, is high stakes. Um, and, and so you wanna make sure it's gonna work repeatably and sustainably. Um, and so it, it's, uh, you know, so there's this, again, uh, you know, gap in, um, uh, you know, technology that's, you know, being used in the public sector, um, you know, that's able to, to rush ahead and fail. And, uh, um, and then, you know, compensation is an issue. Um, uh, and so, like I said, Ash Carter tried to address that by making the, uh, the system more um, permeable so that you could go back and forth um, between government service and the private sector. And, it, it, you know, and I'll, 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 I'll end with the, this last example. The Air Force has a, has a fellows program now that some of my, um, uh, you know, former colleagues in the Pentagon are avail availing themselves of, and that's uh, being uh, uh, embedded in venture firms out, out here in the Valley. Um, so that they get that, um, that macro about, uh, um, you know, evaluating, you know, technology um, and, uh, and looking at risk and evaluating founding teams and, uh, and people's uh, capabilities, uh, you know, to deliver. So um, it's, a, it's a recognized problem and uh, they are uh, actively uh, trying to deal with it. Well, Maynard, <clears throat> Maynard, you mentioned a defense digital service, and you know, we had Chris Lynch here. Oh, last you week. did? Yeah, yeah, he's a he's he's a buddy. He's a force of nature. But I tell you that yeah. the two word takeaway of a great great uh, presentation room was sh sh show up, and uh, um, you know show up with your A game and help help the home team. So yep. just want to thank you for showing up for for all of us in your previous jobs, and also uh, encourage you to consider uh, any future invitations you may have uh, right. to do to show up and, and help help us out. So, but yeah, thanks for I spending time with us, and we'll. We'll hope you join future future classes and over to you for any final words. Uh, yeah, so uh, a, a pleasure to uh, to be with you all. You know, this is a sweet spot for me, and um, I, uh, you know, appreciated you know my my time at uh, at Stanford that uh, um, led to uh, lots of uh, lots of good things and uh, and and good friends. And uh, you know, the the ultimate antidote is you know I met my wife there and I got married in Mem Chu. <laughs> So, uh, anyway, uh, so thanks everybody. So I'll, I'll sign off. Um, 
Uh, Joe knows how to contact me and uh, you can check out my website to see what else I've been doing.